right, so let's see where we are now, see if it's worse. And it is, I was turning it the wrong way. <laughs> it's now, yeah, wow, okay. Hello once again and welcome to the Guitar Foster Parent. I'm your host, John McLean. So good to have you with us as we continue on our journey with our Harmony 2814 project, which is right here. Uh, nearing the end, we're in the middle of the setup process, and so we're going to continue today by adjusting the uh, string action, the string height above the fretboard. We'll talk about that today and, and uh, show you a technique that I use to um, to make that adjustment as we get closer and closer to completing this project. Well, if you're new to the Guitar Foster Parent, I want to welcome you first of all and want to encourage you to check out our trailer video that explains the inspiration behind what we do here and um, why we do what we do. Um, to give you a sneak preview, what we do is we bring in guitars that are unwanted like this one that I acquired from a collector that was thinning out the herd as he said. Um, this is a Harmony guitar, model 2814, um, and it needed some love. It was dirty, had some old parts on it, uh, net, the, the uh, nut was chipped and broken, it just needed some things to make it nice again. Uh, you can go back and view the videos of all the things we've done to this guitar. Uh, we're nearing the end, but the point is, is that when we finish our guitars on the Guitar Foster Parent, uh, going along with our ethos of every guitar deserves to be played, we're going to place this guitar in its forever home. And so if you would like to nominate somebody that would love to have a guitar that's uh, fixed up and plays nice and will make music again, uh, they have to play it. That's the thing. I don't want this to wind up in a closet again. It needs to be played and make music. Uh, let me know that at our email address here at Guitar Foster Parent. That's john at guitarfosterparent.com. And that will come to me. And if you'd like to nominate somebody to receive this guitar free of charge, we'd love to do that as uh, part of our mission here at Guitar Foster Parent. Please like the channel and subscribe, or like the video, subscribe to the channel. Got to use the right terminology here. And then click the notification bell so that you'll be notified when uh, new videos come out. We don't do these often. This is a side gig for me. And so um, I do them when I have time. I uh, wish I had more time to do them more often, and sometimes I do, but I've been busy lately um, with the holidays coming and so forth. But um, certainly I'd love to have you along uh, for these uh, projects as we move along. So without further ado, let's talk uh, setup. Last time we were together, we took care of the truss rod adjustment, which if you'll recall on this Harmony guitar, the uh, truss rod adjustment nut is up at the headstock, which is a common spot. Often, sometimes you'll find them uh, down here at the other end of the neck. Um, under the pick guard. This one was easy. You just uh, put the wrench right in there and make the adjustment. We got that done, got it done to a spec like we wanted. Today we're going to talk about the action of the strings. Now we hear this term action. This guitar's got good action or ah, it's bad action. What does that mean? Well, simply stated, the action is the distance between the string and the top of the fret. Okay. Uh, as you know, the way we pitch a guitar is we, we press down on the string until it makes contact with the fret. Most players, especially on electrics, and we'll talk about the difference here in just a moment, but especially on electrics, they like a lower action because it takes a lighter touch to fret a note. Now you can already see from uh, me pressing down here on fret number 10, this uh, string here has to go a long ways down. So this would be considered very high action for an electric guitar. We'll measure it and see just how far off we are. Um, but it varies. Acoustics typically have a slightly higher action. Uh, acoustic guitars typically require a little heavier touch, um, depending again on string gauge and different things. Um, and then basses require even higher action because the strings are a lot fatter. And uh, so you gotta have you gotta have big muscles to play bass guitar. <laughs> Not really. Um, so anyway. Uh, what we're going to do to uh, correct this is we need to measure, first of all, and again, I want to shout out to our good friends at Music Nomad. Um, their tools are available all over the internet, and they make really, really cool kits. You can do this kind of stuff 
to your own guitars at home. Today, we're going to use what is really, in reality, just a piece of aluminum. But what's printed on the piece is what's important, precision measurements to measure string height. And so this gauge is what we're going to use today to, um, to measure the guitar. Now I want to show you the, a picture of the gauge close up and you can see as you look here that um, this thing has a chart in the middle that tells you for electrics, acoustics, for bass, um, how you will want to make sure the strings sit with measurement depending on what the player likes. Some players like a high action just depending on their finger style. Most are probably in the medium to low medium for electrics. We're going to set this one at medium. Uh, because I don't know who's going to have this guitar, so medium is probably, and, uh, it's probably a good uh, place to start. And as you can see, the differences between low and high are, we're talking fractions of an inch. Tiny, tiny little adjustments. And then at the bottom, you will see that the, there's the actual marks that are placed with precision printed upon this piece of aluminum uh, that show us where the um, measurements will be. So we'll be doing that here in just a moment. Uh, also, uh, if you've been with us before using this kit, we will be using the pick capo again um, to fret down the first uh, fret, which enables, you have to do that in order for this gauge, in order for this gauge to read correctly. So we'll be using the pick capo again at the first fret with each string as we go through and measure all six. And then we will uh, make the actual adjustments. And as we can already see just by eyeballing it, this thing's really high. So obviously we're gonna have to bring the string action down quite a bit on this guitar to get to medium on this gauge. This is where bridge type comes in. Uh, there are many different bridge types, several key ones um, on electric guitars that we're going to uh, encounter as we uh, move through some different guitars. This particular guitar is a take on the Tunomatic bridge. This is not a Tunomatic bridge. Um, you will find those on Gibson guitars. And in fact, if you can see the blue uh, Les Paul behind me, um, that has a Tunomatic bridge. Basically what that means is, is you've got a one piece bridge. And so on this Harmony, you can see there's a one piece bridge here. Each saddle height is not adjustable. It adjusts as one piece. But if you can see, there's some thumb wheels here on either side where we can raise either side or the whole thing as one or lower it, depending on what we want to do. Obviously, we're going to be lowering this one and the gauge will tell us how far. But this one uses thumb wheels. Some guitars will have a big, large slot where you'll use a, a screwdriver. This one has thumb wheels. And so we will... Um, be adjusting this again down is going to be the, the main direction I can already tell by eyeballing it as we uh, as we move through the project so that's kind of an idea on bridges some guitars like Stratocaster style guitars will have individual saddles and those can be raised and lowered independently which is kind of nice you can do a lot more custom um, adjustments in terms of um, of how you want each string the player wants each string for example some players may want a slightly higher action on their lower strings um, and then a lower action on the higher strings. Just depends. It's a total preference to make the guitar more playable for the, uh, for the individual musician. Um, this one though, one piece, so we're going to get medium on all six strings. And uh, so we're gonna get started on that right now. By the way, I just saw this on my bench. We're gonna do a timeout. If you would like some free guitar foster parent uh, swag, and uh, so what I have is I have decals and I have picks. Here's a look at our decal, which is really a nice uh, sticker. It's got the QR code for the channel. Great way to share um, the Guitar Foster Parent channel with others. Um, I'd love to send you some of these. And then we had some picks made. So here's the Guitar Foster Parent pick. Real simple, clean. It's got our name on the front and then a QR code on the back so that folks can access the channel. Um, if you'd like, you know, I'll send you a few of each of these for free. Um, if you will send me an email, john at guitarfosterparent.com, I'll send you a packet of those free of charge. Uh, I'm not going to sell your address or, you know, I'm not going to do anything creepy like that. I'm just a fellow that likes to do nice things. And you'd be doing a very nice thing for us by sharing us around and helping us grow. So again, send me your mailing address and just say, I'd like some, I'd like some stuff, I'd like some goodies. And I'd be happy to send you a, a little set of some picks and some decals for you to use and share as you will. 
All right, so what we're going to start today is uh, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to put our pit capo in. I'm going to show you the right way to do that again in case you missed that earlier or have forgotten. And then we're going to start measuring with our string gauge that I showed you earlier. And then we're going to just start at string number six, work our way down to string number one. And by the time we're finished, we should have a medium action throughout all six strings um, on the guitar. And so we're going to get started on that right now. Let's have a look. Well, as we get started, the first thing we're going to be doing is placing our pick capo, the first fret. Um, this will prepare the string for measurement at the 12th fret. So as you recall, this uh, pick capo is triangular. You know, it's essentially just a pick of a certain precision thickness. You'll see the little railroad tracks printed on the front. That represents the first fret. And so what we're going to do is we're going to place the idea being to press down the string in question. So we'll want to thread the pick capo and then line it up where the railroad tracks are right on the first fret and the string number six, our low E string, is pressed down. Oh, by the way, I didn't mention this earlier. Before you do any of these adjustments, make sure the guitar is in tune. We've already done that with our uh, Fender Chromatic Tuner. We plugged it in and got, so this guitar is in tune. Also, they, uh, they recommend that the guitar be in playing position, meaning it's on your lap. I'm not going to do that. It's too hard to video, and I don't think it's going to make that big of a difference. But I just wanted to say the proper way, in case you're watching this and going, you're doing it wrong. Yeah, I am doing it slightly wrong, but I really don't think um, it's going to, uh, to matter so much. So we've got the uh, pick capo in place, and I'm going to show you what it looks like when it's proper. Notice the pick is pointing down toward the bridge. Okay, first fret. There we go. So now we are ready to measure. And so what we're going to do is we're going to take this and I'm going to turn the, this guitar around so that it'll be easier to see on the camera here. This is a challenging thing to shoot, so I hope this comes through. So now uh, the guitar will be upside down to you, but you can see the, um, the 12th fret right here. This is where we measure, okay? This is where we measure the string height. And so what we're basically going to do is we're going to take, and by the way, on the other side of this gauge is the metric. So you have, you know, inches and you have centimeter, millimeter. And in this case, we're talking fractions of a millimeter. But in any case, we're going to use the uh, non-metric side because we're in Texas today. So that's what we're going to do. So basically what you do is you measure at the 12th fret. So at the 12th fret, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So obviously the 12th fret is uh, the one on the far side of the double dot. We're going to measure there and see what our string height is. Okay? And so we, all we do is we just rest this gauge on the frets. And then we look at the 12th fret and see what the measurement is. Okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn it around so that I can see it. Um, but here, I'll lift the guitar up. This guitar is light enough. I can do this. So this is the idea. You're going to want to look along that scale on the bottom, and then you're going to measure up to the bottom of the string. So those little lines printed on the gauge, the bottom of the string, and that's an especially important measurement on these uh, bigger strings, on the wound strings, uh, because they're fat. You know, these strings have some width to them. And so you measure that, and what we want to do is go medium. Okay, so on this gauge, medium tells me that I want to be, for an electric guitar on the low E, I want to be at 0 0.065. Okay, so now that you've seen that, I'm going to turn it around where I can see it and see how far off we are. And so I'm going to place this, and I'm going to tilt the guitar like that, which is more like playing position, right? And here we go, and oh man, we are between 0.10 and 0.11. So we need to go down quite a bit, don't we? All right? So, uh, which is what we knew that already. So here's what we're going to do. And again, note the, this, type, this style of bridge, which is a tunematic style, single. We've got thumb wheels here. We need this end to go down. All right? We need this end to go down quite a bit. So I'm going to attempt to turn this with the strings in tension, and then I will need to retune 
because this is obviously going to mess up the tuning for the whole guitar because we are changing the height of this and everything's going to go way flat, which is fine. We'll plug it in and we'll retune it. I'm going to lower this about what I think. Um, and I don't know, this is going to be interesting because I'm doing this live. So I'm going to turn this, let's see, righty tighty. So this is upside down. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to turn this and see if I'm going the right direction here. To lower it, I think I need to go this way. All right. Yeah. Okay, so we're going to go down quite a bit here as we turn this thumb wheel. Can you see? Wow. That's kind of, kind of bites into your thumb a little bit. All right. So now, now that I've just turned it some, I'm going to make sure I'm turning it the right way uh, because that's the kind of feller I am. All right. So let's see where we are now. See if it's worse. And it is. I was turning it the wrong way. <laughs> it's now... Yeah. Wow. Okay. All right. So we're going to turn it the other way now. Okay. So obviously it's this way we want to go. Which makes sense because this shaft is going to be higher, right? Um, so yeah, that makes sense. All right, so it wants to stop right there for some reason. Not sure why. Measure again. All right, well, we've got it back to where it was. It doesn't want to turn anymore. Here's my fear. My fear is that we've bottomed it out. Well, we've run into a bit of a problem and I wanted to pause the video to investigate a little bit so that I didn't stretch it all out, but um, the bridge was all the way down. Um, this is the underside of the bridge. You can see there's just some Phillips screws. These screws are tacked to the underside. These should not turn. And so, you know, if we take a screwdriver, we should not be able to move these and we can't. I mean, they don't, they don't move. Um, the problem is, is that these, these are the thumb wheels, okay? And you can see there's some thickness to them. They were all the way down and the bridge was still too high. And so I thought, well, we have a problem. So I removed the strings, removed the bridge and looked to verify what I thought was the case. You know, if we put these thumb wheels on, which I, whoops, which I'll do right now just to kind of show you, and they just spin on, that thing is all the way down. This is the position that they were both in and you saw how high the string action was. So what do we do? Well, let's think about this for a minute. After putting our old noggin to this problem, what do we do? As you can see, there's no way to get this thumb wheel down further. Now, one thing I could do is remove the thumb wheels so that we eh, dropped it, but it's okay. So we have this and then we just take the bridge saddle and drop it straight on there. That lowers it quite a bit. Here's the problem. Now it's no longer adjustable and it doesn't sit nice and flat. This is not the right way to do it. So I became a little mystified and discouraged until I remembered a problem that we had on the OG base. It was the same problem. I could not get the string action lower because I replaced the bridge on that base. I did a lot of work, pretty much replaced everything on that base. How did I solve the problem? I wound up because if we can't lower the string height down here, there's got to be another way to do it and still maintain the adjustability of the bridge. The way we're going to do that is we're going to change slightly the angle of the neck to the body. And we do that with a shim. Now, if you recall, way back at the beginning of the project, when I was doing the initial inspection on this guitar, I found a small kind of a foamy tape kind of shim that was kind of crudely applied between the neck joint and the body when I took the neck off the guitar to look under there. I was looking for stamps and markings, which can, you know, tell you a little bit about the history of the guitar. I didn't find any, but what I did find was that little shim. I put it back right where it was. 
But now, for whatever reason, it looks like, and it may be that I didn't get it shimmed back exactly where I thought I did, we're going to need to change the neck to body angle. Okay, so how do we lower the strings? We're going to need to make the angle of the neck more, and this is an extreme example, but we're going to need to, to shim the neck where it mounts more like this to the body of the guitar. Okay, um, I have a set of shims and I'm going to show them to you now. All right, so if you didn't see the set of um, OG bass videos, oh, we talked a lot about these shims. Here they are. This is a set of threes from a company called Outback Designs. You can get these online of guitar neck shims. And this is the thickest one, which is one degree. And then I have a half degree and a quarter degree, which doesn't seem like much, but when we're talking about the fine tolerances of string action, um, this really uh, makes a big difference. What we're going to do is we're going to wind up having to shim the neck on this harmony because I want to make sure that the action is good and I want to maintain the tunability of this little uh, kind of single saddle tunematic style bridge. Which of these shims will it take? Well, it's trial and error. And so it's pretty time consuming. What we're going to have to do is we're going to have to put one on that we think might do it and again, this guitar was pretty far out. I mean, the, this, the bridge was all the way down and we were talking, what was it, 0.1? And it needs to be 0.65? That's a lot of adjustment. So I may actually put the either the half or even the full degree shim in, but then you have to restring the guitar. You've got to you know, put the neck back on, restring the guitar. And um, it's quite a process. Okay, so as you can see, I put the bridge back on. I've removed the neck from our Harmony project, uh, backpedaling a bit. I mentioned earlier uh, that I found this material. Uh, it's, it's, kinda, it's not really a foam tape like I described. It's, it's like a piece of, I don't even know what it is. I guess it's plastic. It's very brittle. It's very old. This was obviously intended as a shim, and there's two pieces of it. You can see there's a little uh, nick right here that was going against the uh, screw. Um, this obviously is not going to be useful for us anymore because we're reshimming this guitar um, from scratch. Now remember, what we want to do is lower the strings. So if my arm is the neck, we want the neck to do what? Go this way, right? That's going to bring the angle down the strings and pull them closer to the fretboard. Okay, so that's what we want to accomplish. To do that, these shims, and this is going to be way too thin for you to see on the camera, but these shims, this is the one degree one. And so I'll hold it up in case you can, but I, you know, you really, it's really hard. It's thicker, it's a wedge, okay? It's, it's shaped like a wedge. It's thicker on this end and pretty much goes down to thin to almost to nothing on this end. Um, this being a one degree angle, okay? So if we want our neck to go like this, we want to make sure what? We want to make sure that the thick end of the wedge is toward the bridge, right? That's going to force the neck to sit at this kind of an angle. If we do it the other way, it's going to sit like this and the action will be higher. Okay, so these are guitar shims is how they're described. And again, they come from a company called Outback Designs. You can see the, their logo on there. Um, they're not super cheap. Um, but these are just described as guitar shims. Um, these really are large enough to do a bass. And in fact, I did the precision bass with a set of these very shims. When you buy a set of these, they come in a little baggie and you get a, a one degree, a half degree, and a quarter degree. Uh, this is the one degree. Um, and I think I'm going to put the half in the guitar to start. So here's the, yeah, here's the half one. See, so 0.5 degrees. Um, Here's the problem you have. First, you have to identify the thick end. And on these particular shims where the number is oriented, that's the thicker end of the wedge. And you can tell by feeling it, you know, that it gets thick on this end. So as we talked about, we want the thick end to go in, but look what's happened. The shim doesn't sit flat. And the reason why is because this is kind of a universal size shim to be large enough to do a base neck. The holes will line up fine so that the screws will go through. So what does that mean that I'm going to have to do? I'm going to have to do some trimming on this shim 
to get it to fit nice and flat in this um, neck pocket here on the body. What I don't want to do definitely is mash this down because that's going to jack up the thickness and it's going to, this is, this needs to sit perfectly flat in this channel. So not only am I going to have to make it a little narrower, I'm also going to have to make it a little bit shorter as well because it's bumping up against these corners. So I'll need to round these corners a little bit too. How are we going to do that? Well, we're going to use sandpaper. Okay. And so this is kind of a, what is this? Uh, yeah, it doesn't say, I don't know what, um, what grain this is, but it's, this is some of the coarser sandpaper that I have here at the workbench. So I'm going to set the guitar aside over here. So it's out of the way and we're going to place our sandpaper down on the bench and we're going to take some material off the sides equally. Okay. So I'm going to maybe do this 10 times and then go over here and do this side 10 times. And then we're going to round off these corners here so that it will sit better in the pocket. So let's have a go at that now. Okay. So you saw, I kind of did a one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten equally on both sides. The nice part about sandpaper is you don't get all these burrs. It's nice and even, even pressure. So now let's bring the guitar body back in, see how it fits. It's still going to be too wide. It's better, but it's still too wide. So we're going to rinse and repeat. All right. You can see on the sandpaper, we've taken off quite a bit of this material here. Let's bring the guitar back in, not dragging the guitar body over the sandpaper, of course. The only reason I mention that is because I've done it myself. I'll tell you what let's do. Let's get a, let's get a rag here and kind of wipe this down some of the dust off of it. Okay. And again, we're just doing the width now. We'll handle the corners here in a second. All right. You know what? That is perfect. That sits down in there nice and flat. And uh, I mean, you can see it's not, super loose, um, which is nice. That will keep it oriented, but it's, it's sitting in there really nice. Now, Here's so we're going to be rounding these corners off. This is going to be a little more challenging, but what it's going to amount to is taking our sandpaper and taking these sharp corners off and rounding them. Okay. So I'm just kind of doing a sweeping motion. Yeah. And so you can see where this sandpaper is fairly coarse and this plastic. So, so you can kind of see, hope you can see against the white background there. It's working. You're gonna have to trust me. It's all on the wrist. <laughs> all right. This is where it's always good. You know, when you run into these snags, it's always good to remind yourself you're having fun here. All right. I mean, there's no prison time if things go bad and you know, I don't have much money invested in this guitar. i care about this guitar. And I want, okay, so I've rounded those off pretty good. Let's see how it fits now. Our sandpaper out of the work area. We're just going to drop this baby in and see how it. Oh yeah, that's pretty good. Okay. I think though, what I want to do is you can see the screw holes still don't, well, wait a minute. No, you can't. Now you can. The screw holes don't line up as well as I'd like. So what I want to do is take, I want to make it shorter on this end. Now, by doing that, we're affecting the, uh, the thickness slightly, but I don't think it's going to be that big of a deal. All right. The other thing to note is if this five degree shim is not the right one, like if we needed the quarter or the one, the full degree, we're going to, have to do all this again. Um, and, and I could use a, you know, a, a power sander if I wanted to, but I don't. 
All right, let's see how that looks, if I like that any better. I do like that better. And in fact, I think that is going to be just right. Now let's talk about the length here. So obviously this is going to be under the neck and ideally we would never know the shim is in there. And you can see this shim sticks out. You can see it really well from the back of the guitar. This shim sticks out, you know, quite a bit right there. So I have a couple of options. I could trim the shim. Um, that's not going to have any effect on the angles that we're talking about here if I just trimmed this off right here. So to trim this off, we're going to use a very, very precise instrument, a nice sharp pair of uh, office scissors. And I'm just going to eyeball this because again, this isn't going to impact, but I do want it to be hidden. And I'll, I'll clean up these corners once I get it. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to trim this corner up a little bit here. And then I'll round them and smooth them. There. All right, so let's clean up these corners that we just cut with our sandpaper. Yeah, perfect. Doesn't take much. I'm just letting the weight of my hand kind of guide this around to smooth it. Okay. Now, I think it's time to put the neck back on. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna put the neck back on the guitar and you know, I didn't show that earlier, but here's the back plate for the neck. It has a little rubber pad that's a ver absorbing vibration. And um, I always, I don't know if this is being too cautious or not, I always keep my screws in order. So just to kind of show you, you know, here's the order of the screws and how they went in to the plate so that the same screws are used in the same holes. Um, just to practice that I've, that I have, I don't know if it's important or not, but that's how I do it. So let's put the neck back on the guitar now. I mentioned this before, but I always like to tighten these like you would a tire. Um, just to make sure you get even tension, um, no undue stress. Again, no one, no expert has ever told me to do this. I just do it. Um, you know, your mileage may vary. Okay, that's it. Now, here we go. Next back on. So now what we're going to do is restring the guitar and uh, I'll pause the video for that because you don't need to see that and we'll get it all put back together and we'll then start our measurement process over again. Be right back. Okay. Well, we got the guitar strung back up, not in tune yet, and I won't uh, subject you to that, but what I wanted to show you um, and mention before I forget, because I have a very short memory, um, the shim worked remarkably well. I had to lift the bridge considerably to keep the strings from touching the fretboard. Okay, so we're going to tune this up and then hopefully this shim is not too thick. Um, I'm glad I didn't put the one degree in. The full degree would have been too thick. Um, it's amazing. You know, guitars are all about angles and it's amazing how much just a half a degree of angle between the neck and the body or more, more uh, I guess, accurately placed between the nut and the bridge, these two tension points here, um, just one degree of angle can make a massive difference because you're talking about fractions of an inch, but they're very important fractions of an inch. 
So I'm going to plug in uh, the guitar into my tuner. We'll get it tuned up. We'll be right back with you. All right, the guitar is in tune and I want to show you <laughs> the difference that putting in a half degree shim has made. Look now at how close the strings are to the frets. All right, we're going to measure here in a second, but also notice how high I had to put the bridge just to get the strings on. All right, so the guitar is in tune. Now we're going to start over again, as it were, and we're going to place our first fret capo in like we showed you earlier. And we're going to now measure at the 12th fret the action. Make sure I've got the right size. Play it and quote unquote, put it in quote unquote playing position or as close to. And now, when I measure string number six, oh yeah. You know what is awesome? Uh, this gauge says for medium on an electric, which is what we want to do for low E should be 0 0.065. So between the six, the 0 0.06 and 0 0.07 measure. Um, I can see them. Okay. So here's the, here's the mark. Bottom of the string meets the top of the line at 0.6. So this string is actually at 0.6, which would be low medium. And on the gauge, uh, low medium or 0.6 is most common. So maybe low medium is the way to go. Um, but it looks like our 0.5 degree was right, which I'm not going to lie. I'm a little surprised, <laughs> pleasantly so, because I really didn't want to take this all apart again and doctor up another shim. Um, here's the other two that I didn't, uh, I didn't change. All right, so we're going to repeat the process now for string number five, or the A string. And so all we do is we apply this capo to that string. And so now it's going to press down that string. Okay. And so now we have the A string pressed down. Uh, whoop, let's get that a little more accurate there, Johnny. There we go. And now we're going to measure string number five and then look at our chart. This is where I wish my eyes were still as youthful as they once were. All right, so uh, yeah, same thing here on string five. We are right at 0 0.6, 0 0.06 rather, which is most common, low medium. Okay, so let's repeat the process for the other five. Um, it's important to note, I just measured the D, and you can see on this scale, high E and low E are different numbers. The reason is because the string diameters change. They get thinner as you move from 6, 5, 4, 3, down to 1. Um, and so your strings need to be lower, um, you know, theoretically, if that's how you like it, as you get to the higher register. So string number one for low medium, which is what we're doing now, is 0 0.05, okay? Which is a whole hundredth of an inch um, lower toward the fretboard than low E, which is at 0 0.06. So as we move down, the string um, should read lower. And so far I've done E, A, and D, or a six, five, and four. They are holding to that. So I think, uh, we're in pretty good shape so far. And remember, as a f one saddle, single saddle, you know, two nomadic, quote unquote, style bridge, you would expect that because this this is set here. You know, this is not adjustable like it is like on a strat where each saddle is adjustable. All right, so I'm going to move my capo and let's move down to string number three, which is the G string. Hardy har har. <laughs> Now, 
Now you might be saying, why are you measuring each string if this saddle is not individually adjustable for strings? Aren't you stuck with what you have? Yes, except remember that this saddle can be adjusted on either end. So if we end up being too low down here on string one, and I'll give you a hint when I was tuning, which you didn't see, we are too low. Um, the reason you know that is because when you pluck the string open, it's buzzing because it's making contact with the frets. Um, we can lift this. Okay, but we're going to go through the exercise of measurement because we're learning here together. And so now I'm on the string number two or B. And as I look at my gauge, yeah, we're getting right down toward the 0 0.05 now, which as we get close to high E is where we should be. And we're almost to high E. So strings two through six look great. Now let's get down to this bottom string here. And we're gonna, and I think what we're gonna find is this string number one, or high E, which should be at 0 0.05, according to this gauge, is going to be too low. And it's actually down toward the point 04. Make sure my gauge is sitting flat on the, there we go. Yeah, so it's a tad low, okay? So to make the adjustment, all we do is we raise this end of the bridge a little bit, which we can do because we shimmed the neck now, all the rules are different. So we raise that slightly. Point zero 0.05. All right. Now our string heights should be where they need to be. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna tune again real fast. Let's turn on our tuner. And since we've messed with the bridge, it'll be off just a little bit. Oh, listen to that. Ah, okay. We got another little issue we're going to have to address, don't we? Let's get her tuned up. Okay, so all these strings. have a good clean ring, right? Except, you hear that? Okay, so um, let's talk a little bit about string buzz real fast. String buzz has several different, um, different causes. Um, it could be a little burr up in the nut, could be a little burr down here and you know, a bridge like this where these, indin ignate, you know, these indentations, or I said indignation, which I guess could be, these indentations down here on the bridge are, um, you know, this string could be slightly sitting out of it, you know? And so the first thing I like to check is down at the nut. So I'll look down here and just see, is the string sitting in the nut pocket in that slot? Yes, it is. Um, the next thing I want to look at, and I'm going to turn the guitar around this way so I can check, is I want to visually inspect each fret to make sure that we're not contacting the fret. And oh boy, looky there. It looks like I may have found the problem. It looks like that the E string is contacting the first fret. I'm going to stick, uh, this is actually a piece of the um, shim that I trimmed off. Oh yeah. Okay. All right. So this E string is too low at fret number one, which is interesting. Everywhere else. I mean, we know at fret 12, it's just right, but yeah, it gets pretty low down here. Doesn't it? Yeah. Okay. So, what are we going to do about that? How are we going to raise the string down here without moving the bridge? Now, obviously we could lift the bridge down here, which would raise our action slightly. And in fact, I'm going to try that first because that's the lowest impact. We're talking about just fractions. I mean, almost too small for me to see with my eyes with this little guy here. 
Um, but if we can raise this, you know, quarter turn, half turn on this thumb wheel and raise this string enough to where we're off here and we still have a reasonable tolerance, which for me, I'm saying on the E string, I'm going to say 0 0.055 to, down to 0 0.05 for me would be, you know, I, I can't imagine the most precise player would know the difference in, you know, what is that, a, a five thousandths of an inch? I mean, you know. That's, we're talking thinner than a human hair, I think, at this point. But um, then that would be the lowest impact thing is just a quick adjustment down here. If that doesn't work, we're going to have to start getting more creative, and it's probably going to involve the nut. Remember, we replaced this nut early in our project, and um, I, we did have to do some initial filing. Because remember, when these nuts come from the factory, they just score the top to show you where the strings go. Well, obviously when we put strings on, they wouldn't even stay in the slot. So I had to file and I just did a quick little score out of each so that there would be room for the string to go in. Perhaps I could have got a little rambunctious down here and filed it too deeply. What do we do with that? Well, let's try this quick adjustment down here real fast first. So I'm going to turn this wheel, uh, this will be clockwise as I'm looking at it, that will raise the saddle slightly on this end and give us some string height. And let's see what the measurements turn out to be then. Okay. Now we're going to want to tune back up because since we moved the bridge, the tuning is going to be off. Yep. See, we're still... Hmm. Well, not so much peace and harmony. <laughs> That's terrible. I should edit that out. All right, so um, the bridge is pretty high now, and just eyeballing it, it may still be a little low on this end, and we're still making contact, and strangely, only with string number one, down here on fret number one. It is trying to fret, and I can tell by touching it, it's not moving down at all. Um, and we're still getting that. So you can tell it's being contacted there. So we're gonna wrap up for this episode of a Guitar Foster Parent. Why? Because I need to study. I need to figure out what the best next move is. Uh, whether it's just more fine-tuning bridge adjustment, like start over on the bridge, maybe start higher and work, work down, I don't know. Um, or we may have to look into how do we fix a nut that's been over-filed. Did I get too rambunctious on my initial, you know, just giving it a slot where the string could sit and tune up? Maybe I did, and if so, may have to end up pulling this new nut out and putting another new nut in, which will cost a whole six or seven bucks. <laughs> it's worth it for the learning experience, and that may be what we have to do. We'll just have to see. But I will say that the half-degree neck shim did fix our problem of a bottomed-out bridge. And I'm grateful for my experience with the OG precision bass behind me because I had to do neck shimming. I was pretty nervous. Uh, you can go back and look at those videos during that process. Um, I'd never done anything like that before. And as it turned out, it really wasn't that big a deal. And um, that experience helped me uh, have the confidence to give it a go here on the old Harmony 2814. Next time, we'll have a solution and we'll walk together through how we're going to fix this terrible string buzz contacting problem. Ooh, isn't that pretty? We have stray cats running in from all over the neighborhood. Um, the good news is the other strings sound great and uh, they tune up nice. So, next time on the Guitar Foster Parent, we'll tackle that. Before we go, please like and subscribe. Thanks for hanging out with us here in the shop. We're having a great time. And again, if you know somebody that once it's fixed and Trust me, this string will sound good by then. Would like to own this guitar and use it to make music, uh, any kind of music at all, and not putting it in a closet so that it can become a hat rack or gather dust. If you'd like to nominate somebody, uh, some deserving somebody that would love to have this guitar for their very own, please let us know at the email address right below me. 
and uh, we'll talk about it. We'll put this in a forever home. I'm just the foster parent of this guitar, and I'm going to get it all set to make music and then send it out uh, on its way. So let me know that. Please like and subscribe, and join us next time when we fix this pesky string buzz on the guitar foster parent. I'm John McLean. Thanks for joining us. Bye-bye. <laughs>